Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. I'm Jesper, and this is the Clock of Porn Mark II by Shakmat. So here we have the Clock of Porn Mark II up close and personal. Before we go any further, I do have to thank Shakmat Modular for making this video possible. They provided the module, and this couldn't have been done without their help. So again, thanks guys, appreciate you. So what I want to do is I want to quickly go over the interface of the module and then do a quick comparison between the Mark 1 and the Mark 2. Then start building some patches, hopefully nice ones. But again, it's all in the eyes of the beholder, or in this case, the ears of the beholder. And I do have to say there's no accounting for taste, but I'll do my best. After that, I'll share my... Uh, thoughts, my conclusions, my key takeaways after using this module for a couple of weeks. And after that, I'll continue this video uh, with just examples of all of the grooves and all of the, well, accent patterns that you've got already built into this module. So that being said, I'll add chapter markers to everything so you can just skip around if you want uh, or if certain things aren't uh, up to your liking feel no pressure there whatsoever so let's dive right in again it's a clock generator um, that's it it's gonna be your uh, your key orchestrator for your entire uh, modular Eurorack gear um, you can also use it of course to clock external devices um, as long as they indeed uh, accept uh, probably like a 4 PPQN uh, signal, so because this is indeed offering that 16th output, or indeed the clock uh, that's going to output 4 PPQN, so 4 pulses per quarter note. That's what I learned. <laughs> um, and you can use that going forward. What you can't do with the Mark II is you can't clock it from an external analog clock or another clock module or another sequencer. You can only do that through MIDI. And this MIDI input is indeed a TRS one, um, but Shakmat have done a tremendous quality of life thing uh, by offering you an easy way to switch between MIDI TRS A and TRS B just by changing some jumpers on the back of this module. Let me just throw that up on the screen so you can easily see that. So again, very easy to use that in combination with MIDI gear or with external controllers. I'll show this with a BeatStep Pro uh, during the, um, uh, the patches and the uh, expose as well. Then, of course, you'll have your outputs, your clock output, which I mentioned, uh, your accent output. So where you place accents on your um, uh, on your track, you can easily have that there. You've got your 16th, dedicated 16th output, which is not going to be influenced by, let's say, uh, swing settings or other settings like uh, humanize, those sort of things. And you've got your reset output. And of course, for all of these outputs, they have accompanying LEDs, which will show you exactly when pulses are being sent out. So hopefully this is easily visible on the video, but you'll see that indeed, when you press play, it just works. And that's just beautiful. Another key thing, what you'll then see is the screen and the menu. Uh, but before we dive into that, let's continue on with the interface and then we'll do that so you've got your navigation buttons so in this default mode that we have right now if you're running your uh, uh, well your track your uh, your sequences you can use the navigation buttons to easily nudge the bpm up or down with a max of 10 and indeed when you release it it's going to immediately jump back to your set BPM. Let's stop this right now. What you'll see is that you've got these two, let's call them operators for now. So the, both the stop button and this gold button will act as alternative operators for the rest of the buttons. So if you hold down the gold button and the navigation button, you can go through the menu. Um, if you hold down the stop button and press these, you can load and save your settings. Right now you can have 16, but that can be increased later on as well. Um, 
and what you'll also see is that you can use these also in combination with the play and pause button so if you hold down the gold one and you tap a tempo you'll see that you'll then have that set um, if you hold down this and this you'll send reset so very straightforward to do that let's dive into the menu and I, I know of course that menu diving is a bit of a uh, a dirty word within your rack it's something we want to make sure that everything is as easy as possible and I feel that we cannot call this menu diving in this case because it's very straightforward it's very immediate at least in my opinion um, so it, this is one of the best menus um, that you can incorporate into your rack especially in this small size so again as mentioned just hold down the gold button and you can navigate through it right now the LED indicates okay we're at the BPM setting so here you can use your transport buttons your uh, navigation buttons here to navigate through it's got a very nice acceleration on the BPM settings as you saw we can go all the way up to 300 and we can go all the way down to huh? mid what's that again okay no that's MIDI so you can go all the way down to 30 and then to MIDI so in this case if you set it to MIDI it's going to be controlled by the MIDI input you've got there let's continue let's set this back to the 60 and again I, I do have to appreciate the acceleration in that counter it just works perfectly so next up is the groove settings so here you can select the grooves that you have I'll put the complete list on screen and as mentioned I'll go through all of them uh, at the end of this video but for now I'm just going to keep it at this one this is the 4-4 swing so right now it doesn't do anything uh, because the amount of the applied swing is set to zero so this will have an effect on the effect of the groove and again that's something you'll see in the addition of the uh, at the end of this video I should say but let's make sure that we all understand what this means right now so let's make the first connections of today so first I'm just gonna connect this to the clock and I'm gonna connect a second cable to the 16th output and what I want to do is I want to show and let you hear what's happening with this so I've got the clock connected to the metalatron to just trigger a, uh, a hi-hat and I've got both of these outputs on the scope as well so the top is going to be the 16th note and the bottom one will be the clock so if I now press play we should be able to see and hear there you go so what you'll now see is that both the clock and the 16th are perfectly in sync no problems there whatsoever so let me then just increase a bit of the swing to it and what you'll see is that now the even notes so note number two and number four are indeed being delayed so you'll see that those are going to be shifting a bit further on and you can go all the way up to let's say in this case 100 and they're completely out of sync and if we then reduce it you'll get back to it there you go so again these are of course and swing is one of the key effects uh, that you'll have in modular in jazz in, in a lot of music as well it adds that swing to it as you can hear right now also uh, you don't need to go all the way up to 100 of course um, even at lower settings this already adds a lot of well it makes everything a bit more dynamic if you ask me and I like this implementation and of course this amount will have different effects depending on the groove that you have and of course later on also which of the accents and accent patterns you'll have so you might have seen the accent light light up a couple of times 
right now that accent is set to once per bar and a bar in this case is 16 notes so you'll see that if we if we wait a bit that'll come in so what I'll do is I'll just disconnect the 16th for now and what I'll also do is connect um, well let's let's just use a bass drum for now so I'm just gonna grab that and we'll be able to hear a bass drum once there we go And we can then, of course, change this to another one. So, half. Fourth. Eighth. And, of course, typically an accent will be applied to um, add extra emphasis on an instrument. So, you... Right now I'm cheating a bit, but what you can also do is then use this to trigger something that will have an effect on the, in this case, the, um, well, the hi-hat we've got there. So instead of just triggering the foundation, I'll just let this uh, play on for now. But what I'll do is I'll patch the accent to a envelope. So I'm just gonna create an envelope with that and I'm not gonna add that envelope to the decay input of the battletron Disconnect the, um, the bass drum for now. So that might be that on the accent you want to have an open hi hat, something like that. Ah, just a simple example. Okay, let's uh, stop that for now, and let's go back to the bar and let's go into the fourth menu option which is humanization so essentially this is gonna randomize the triggers that you'll have so again i'm gonna connect this to the 16th so you'll be able to see it a bit better and what i'll do is when we press play you'll still be hearing the metalotron and again on the scope above is the 16th so that's the the true clock you might say and below is the clock and that's the one that's going to be impacted just like we did with swing but now with humanization so what you'll see is as we increase this you'll see that the notes below start to jump around a bit so it is indeed adding some inaccuracy to it you might want to call this a drunken drummer or something like that. You can also hear it very well. So you might want to start playing with this if you want to add a bit of that, well, human approach, not that robotic drummer that always drums exactly when, uh, when they need to, like they do right now. But if you want to have a bit of a human touch, just add it. I wouldn't recommend to go all the way overboard to uh, 100 because then it's just all over the place. But again, you might want to use it in certain cases because still it's it's uh, it's still in a rhythm. So yeah, who knows? But again, just wanted to uh, make sure that we all understand that. Okay, next up, the reset settings. So what you can now do is indeed set. Okay, when do we need to set send? A reset pulse on the reset output so you can then say okay I want to have that uh, at play and of course when you start and on every first one 
and there are several options for this and let me just grab them from the manual and show you exactly what you uh, what you can do with that because um, it's now going to be in this case what you'll see is it's playing and it's going to be set at stop and every one bar but you can also change that so you can go into okay every two bars every four bars every eight only at play play and every uh, one bar two six eight only uh, at play and stop and the list goes on and on um, for me I've just kept it at this um, most of my patterns will be max 16 max 18 something like that depending on the groove you've got but it's just this very ease of use and very easy to change that so if for whatever reason your patch demands something else you can do that then you can add a delay uh, between the reset and the well the actual clock going out and this is to increase compatibility with certain sequences I've set it at two for now uh, because I found that when I use this in combination uh, with the Hermit, but also with the uh, TrickSec one uh, right here, uh, that this works best for me. But again, it's very easy to add those or change those as well if you want. Then you've got a setting there to make sure that the 16th keeps going even if you press stop so if you want to have uh, your clock just orchestrating one thing but you want to have your 16th note continue uh, for keeping other sequences uh, in sync or any other application you can just change that there straight away from the menu then the number of taps you need for a tap tempo all the way from two to eight I like four adds a bit of consistency but again up to you to decide and then we come to what I think is again a bit of that special source that you might want SB serial bus and as I mentioned Harlequin's context is that special tool that we can now use S serial bus essentially means that there is a possibility of communication uh, through the well through the ribbon cable at the back so what this allows it allows for modules that use that same serial bus uh, protocol to be able to communicate with each other and in this case we can use that for recalling certain stored um, uh, settings so the presets that you might have and now I've got this set up as a receiver but you can also set it up as off for me it makes sense to have this as a receiver so what this means is that I now have here on the Harlequin's context I've got four scenes under this button and what this will do it'll use this to start loading the presets on the pawn o'clock so this makes switching that much easier of course you can also just go in here and say hey I want to uh, to load one of these by hand and then selecting them like this but this is much easier and much more intuitive so again as I mentioned this is indeed that special source that you absolutely will love if you've got another uh, controller or another interface or another module that supports select bus um, it's not something that's only Shakmat offers uh, WMD and several others also uh, provide serial bus operations um, if you've got some suggestions or uh, great other modules that will combine with Clock Upon Mark II, specifically on Serial Bus, just drop them in the comments below because I like to learn about that and I'm pretty sure a lot of the audience will uh, love it as well. So what does this mean? Press play. Change it. Go from 60 to 80. Or these. Or this is one that's now in MIDI mode 
So that's that. Let's discuss the, well, the elephant in the room or the, the pawn in the room. And that's indeed, well, okay, Mark 1, Mark 2. What's the difference? I already mentioned one of them. And let me just make sure that we have an image of the Mark 1 on screen here as well. So one thing you'll see is that the Mark 1, um, opposed to the Mark 2, Mark 1 was able to be clocked by an analog clock. Again, for me, that is not a big that that's not a uh, a blocking issue for me because I want this to be my master clock, and if I do want to use it clocked by something else by my door or by my sequencer, I still have that option to do it through MIDI. So I want this to be my master clock in my Eurorack setup. And just like the Mark uh, II right here, um, the Mark I has two clock outputs. Difference with it being that it's called clock one and clock two, where clock one essentially is the same as the 16th output here, and the clock two is essentially the clock output there. It's got that reset, and it doesn't really have an accent output. So again, that's something, that whole accent pattern, that whole accent approach, that's completely new. And then, of course, you've got the addition of that screen, the menu, uh, as opposed to the rotary knob. And of course, it's nice to have a knob to set your BPMs, but if you truly want to have complete control, if you want to have it running in sync with other things uh, that you can't sync with MIDI, if you've got a specific BPM in mind, this is how it works. Um, it does have, again, for swing, it does have that, well, uh, that physical knob there. And of course, that's for a reactivity. That's nice. But if you really want to dial it in, and I don't think that setting swing uh, with these buttons is that big of an option. And yeah, it's, it's a great upgrade, if you ask me. So um, I'll, I'll, I don't want to spoil all my thoughts right now, but... I think that the Mark II is a very significant improvement on the Mark I. Um, if you've got a Mark I and you're happy with it and you don't have any need for the additional features there, stay where you are. Just be happy with the great Mark I, uh, which is also one of the great modules that Shakmat has released. If you don't have a Mark I yet and you're looking for that master clock, absolutely consider this. So that's just a quick overview of the module let's um build some patches shall we i'll be right back so before we actually start jamming i still promised one quick uh example and that is how to sync it to external midi gear so here i've got a beatstep pro and as you can see it's got a well hopefully the camera picks up on that it's got a TRS MIDI output. So I've just got a regular old TRS cable and I'll just connect that to the clock upon Mark II. I'll jump into a mode that supports MIDI. So again, just to uh, show that. So in BPM, if you go below 30, you'll be in MIDI mode. So right now, let me just press play here on the BeatStep Pro. Make sure that we can all see what we're doing. And it immediately starts with that as well. I can, of course, then also just change the BPM. Pause it, continue it. It's just that easy. So let's uh, start jamming, shall we? So before we do that, first things first, let's clock the LFOs of Harlequin's context to the clock upon Mark II. So in order to do that, what I've done here is I've patched in a copy of the 16th note to Harlequin's context 
and I've connected, of course, the output to the scope so we can see what's happening. Right now, I'm looking at LFO number one on the A channel there. And what we'll need to do is we'll need to switch to a, well, a set, essentially a mode of Harlequin's context that supports that. Uh, this is one of the Jester sets, and I'll need to select the one called L. And what you'll immediately see is that the well the rate of the LFOs immediately changes because of course it hasn't received the clock yet. Um, the one funny thing is of course you'll need to patch in the clock signal into the CV in, not into the gate. If we now press play and we uh, keep an eye on the scope, you'll see that we have the uh, 16th output in green and we'll have the, well indeed the LFO in this case a sine wave on blue. Let me just quickly adjust the uh, the range there so we can see what's happening a bit better. There you go. And let's maybe increase it a bit. If I now increase the rate, you'll see that it is now exactly one period of the LFO for every for every beat for every sixteenth note. And of course, now this becomes a clock divider for the LFO. So now it's half a period, a third, a quarter, and that just continues on. If we then switch to, an to another preset, let's see, in this case, let's switch to two, we'll see that the BPM has changed and it immediately picks that up. Right now, we have a triangle LFO set up and as you see immediately it behaves the exact same way we can then of course use that for modulation uh, we can also have a look at some of the random notes so right here we've got the C output in this case this is the uh, the float one so this is indeed free-flowing uh, random um, CV values but if we switch to scene one, it's going to become a more classic, there you go, more of a stepped CV. So let's work with that. We've got our beat going on. So um, how about we first make sure that we are able to get a melody in so we can have something nice to listen to while we're patching. I'll just leave, let this run along for now. So let's grab a copy of the 16th and I'll patch that into the Hermit. So we now have a nice melody going there and I can then patch that into, let's do it into the surface. I'll get the CV in. into the volt proctive, get the gate as well, or at least, well, the, even though we are using the gate as a trigger, because indeed we're using the surface. And make sure that we patch that into our mixer. I'll just get one channel for now. We'll do some stereo stuff after this. <laughs> Not too bad, not too bad. Um, how about we just decrease that a bit? Let's see. So I can just change the clock settings on Hermit to make it a bit slower. Modulation, which is now clocked to the clock as well. I will use that to modulate all of these signals. Well, let's use the um, the random one like that. 
Thanks. I'll use that to change the tone. And I'll use another one to modulate the strike, which is also always one of the things I like to do on the surface. another groove going you can also have all of these going on as well some more to this. And we want to start using the accent output as of course as well. Which we haven't done so yet. So I'm just gonna patch this into the buffered matrix here.
that and I'll add some of some granular and some delay later on uh, by using Mojave and Nautilus. Yeah. 
set, I need to go to 3. But I need to go to C. Apologies. Now, shoot me. Yeah, now it works. And now it of course depends on what you've got set up for your uh, reset signals. Now every uh, 16 or, well, every time you had a measure, it's going to send a reset for you. So indeed this might be a bit too chaotic, but you might want to uh, change this around. So another thing I haven't shown yet, I'm just going to disconnect this for now, leave this as is, is we've talked about changing these scenes, but other than that, you also have, of course, the actual acts that you can change. So right now we're in act number one, but if I now change this to act number two, and go to the first one, you'll see that we are no longer loading one and two for instance, but five and six. And these I've loaded up with the, well, the, the hip hop inspired grooves that Shakmat has implemented here. So again, what I might want to do first is change the reset settings. So I'm just gonna go to there and change this from one to four. Okay. That. Go to this one, do the same here. Oh, but I forgot to save them, of course. Haha. <laughs> Funny, yes, but.
the 16, but because of the amount of swing I've got now, I want to change that.
So there you have it, the Shackmat Modular Cluck Up Horn Mark II. And I do have to say, I was impressed with the amount of functionality uh, they've been able to fit into just 6 HP of clucky epicness, I might say. And of course, the question then comes is, okay, well, I've got a Cluck Up Horn Mark I. Um, is this now pawn a cluck for that one and replace it with a Mark II? And that's a question I can't really answer for everyone. Um, it depends on what you need. It depends on what attracts you in the Mark II. It also has a lot to do with what kind of functionality you're currently using of the Mark I. So if you are looking to replace your Mark I with a even more versatile well master clock for your system then by all means go ahead and do it if you're using your mark one and you're clocking that with an external analog source that's of course a piece of functionality you won't be able to get on the mark two then again that's not what the mark two really is for it's meant to be that master clock and yes of course you can still use midi uh, to clock it externally but this is meant to be the well the orchestration master as the manual also mentions it for your whole eurorex system and from this going forward you can do a lot and with a lot i mean that i was really impressed with the amount of grooves and accent levels that they've been able to fit into this and i talked about how the firmware can probably be updated going forward so who knows what that might bring for the future and then again also that functionality with the select bus and of course i'm in the lucky position that i was able to uh, already use that straight away um, with the, the, with the modules I showed it with. But if you already have select bus uh, modules like from Shakmat or from uh, WMD or others, then it's going to make your life that much easier. So that being said, will I recommend this? Absolutely. If you're looking for a master clock, if you're looking for something that's going to inspire you to uh, step out of your comfort zone from when it comes to rhythms, uh, for grooves, if you want to experiment more, this is a key starting point. And even if you are much more advanced going forward, the amount of control you have with this, with or without other select bus uh, systems, it's going to be unbeatable going forward. Of course, I know a lot of people that just use an LFO as their master clock, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to be in more control, if you want to have just one module orchestrating everything then this is the way to go that being said again i want to thank shakmat modular for uh, making this episode possible and for everyone watching right now it's good to be back absolutely so with that i want to close but not before i say that well again i'm going to have all the grooves all the accents afterwards in the same video so stay tuned if you're interested to see and hear all of those and uh, for now stay safe stay healthy and uh, see you next time cheers